You straight up poo that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because we're feeling fresh as hell. Oh, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna this together. Yes. Quarterback log, I'll report back shortly. Justin out. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, hey there, hi there, ho there, folks. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wool Dogs, and with my buddy, Kev Huggin Duggan. What's up, buddy? And, uh, no, there's no Kyle, the coach, mm-hmm. Duggan, this week, folks. Nope. He said, nuts to this, I'm out of here. <laughs> Catching the first plane to Hawaii. And uh, and God love him for it. He's uh, He can do that. <laughs> and and we, got a, we got a snowstorm here, so it's kind of fitting that he's yeah, on the beach. Yeah, it's and cold we're as with- balls here. Snow's falling sideways, and Kyle's in Maui soaking up the sun. <laughs> son of a bitch. Jerk. Well, folks, we've got a heck of an episode lined up for you. Lots to talk about. Obviously, the season is done. It's over. Stick a fork in it. Uh, there's lots of now rumblings around on Twitter. Uh, so many quotes. There's so many quotes in this, folks. And crime and nitly, the Ask Bolt fam, you sons of bitches. You guys ask the <laughs> longest questions in the good gym world. But uh, let's waste no time. Let's start at the top. Uh, we We were very surprised on Twitter by one of our listeners who we sent a hat out he won, to. He won one of the Ask Bolt Fam hats. He won one of the Ask Bolt Fam hats when we were chumming the waters for laughter and positivity. positivity yeah. This was one of the guys that uh, won that hat. And I'm talking about salty sports dude, salty sports guy. Depends on the day of the week, what he goes The year, by. the season <laughs> changes. <laughs> but sent us a video of him wearing the hat uh, while he's playing a concert of some kind. I'm not sure where, but he sent us the video. It immediately put a smile on our face, and we just want to share it with you guys because we love it so much. Real, And it's so quick. Just hang on. Hold on. Hang, Don't go anywhere. Sit hang down. Tight. Hang tight. Yay. Thanks, dude. That was freaking awesome. I love <laughs> it. Rock of the hat. He's got the pick in his mouth. I he's, we talked about he's this. He's got before. the crowd behind him. That looks like a fun time to me. This is what I'm talking about. Like we talked about this before. <laughs> I've always wanted to be like a musician, but I got the saxophone. I wish I could play the guitar. I have a guitar. I bought a guitar. I don't know how to play it. So I might I might hit you up later, salty sports dude. Teach Give me my some man lessons. Kev a thing or two. Give me about some lessons. How to use the guitar. Let's go. But that's awesome, dude. That really put a smile on our face. It's rad. All right. And with Kyle, the coach, Duggan, not with us right now, he managed to find a few seconds to step away <laughs> and send us a quick little vid of his thoughts on the end of the season and what we have to look forward to. So let's let's go to Kyle, the coach, Duggan, live in Maui. Kyle, where are you? All right, boys, try to find somewhere quiet to record this uh, in Maui with the fam. Um, But, yeah, overall, very disappointing season. Um, But I guess we had a couple weeks to kind of come to terms with it. And now now I'm, like, more excited about the offseason. We can't lose in the offseason. That's a good start. Two, we know (laughs) we're going to have a whole new different team. I think that's exciting. Um, Obviously, the personnel we had were great. They just couldn't stay healthy for whatever they can't put together. Okay, I'm going to come put your floaty on. One sec. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, right now watching this Michigan game on my phone, Harbaugh is exciting. Come on, boys. We got to go get him. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone's going to remember 2023 as a great season, but 2024, a, what is it, 19-0 with the bye in the first round? 20-0. 20-0. Here we go, Bears. Let's go Bears? 20 let's go, Bears? Let's go, let's go Vice. Oh, boys? He said boys. Boys? With an, with an accent. 20 and 0. 20 and 0. Here we go, Bears. 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 <laughs> Take two, Kyle. <laughs> Miss Bears. All right. Well, yes, lots of good points 20 there. 20 and 0. We're back 20 at 0, it. 20 coming in hot. <laughs> Listen, that's what we do here at the Charger Chat Podcast. We're not about realism. We're about what we want. And that's exactly. what we want. It's what we need. 
Um, but yes, uh, we can't lose in the off season and Harbaugh is very exciting. Uh, I have, I have the game on right here. There's like 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter and because you, I, I, during this game, all these people have been talking about like, all right, Chargers is going to make a push. Everyone's coming out of the woodworks to give their, like, I have some inside information. Oh my God. They're about to score a touchdown Ooh. almost. Michigan, they just got a huge uh, catch. Um, but Ooh. like every everyone in their woodworks, like oh, and uh, you know they're looking for houses, and and Harbaugh's looking for houses in L.A. Oh, so it's just like, please just stop. I just just hire him so I can stop stressing about this. It is a very stressful time right now with all of the rumors floating about. So much of them talking about the Chargers, but still, until that pen hits the paper, until that announcement hits. Uh, it's just going to be nerve wracking <laughs> for at least the next week. So yeah. take your tums, mind your ulcers and uh, just be cautious. All right. Yep. Um, all right. Well, looking at this last game, I don't know what there is to even look at. Uh, Chargers lost 13 to 12 yep. against the Chiefs. You know, you never want to see them lose unless it gets you the number five overall pick in the NFL draft. So we were sitting there at the end and I, we looked at each other like, dude, this sucks. I can't believe I'm rooting for the chiefs to make this field goal. Cause if they wouldn't have made that field goal, we'd be like sixth or seventh. Right. So yeah, it definitely would have changed the, the pick for the overall draft. I wouldn't say that I was necessarily rooting, but as I was watching, I was like, it, it's, it's the tale of the chargers for the entire season that, Yes, we get a lead, but if the other team has the ball with any time left on the clock, they're going to find a way to get the lead. And it was not a, oh, we had a two score lead or something like that. Like, yeah. all they had to do was get a field goal and they take the lead again. And sure enough, they did. So it was a very, it wasn't very fun to watch, to be honest. Like, that was the, it really weird, wasn't, that was the weirdest game this year where it was just like, I usually get up like crazy for Chiefs games. Um, but it just wasn't. Well, it was all backups. It wasn't even, you know, and people Herbert got against hurt. Mahomes. A whole bunch of people got hurt in the first quarter and pulled them out. They didn't go back in. Pipkins yeah. got hurt. Pipkins got hurt. Everett. Sawyer got hurt. Everett, Everett got hurt. Yeah. So it was just a, just kind of a shit show in there. And it, yeah. Not good, the way. Good, good on to everyone who showed up to the game and kept the guys on. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Not the way we wanted to see the season end. Not the way we wanted to see, see the season go at all. But it it's not what is we what want, it but it's what we deserved, I guess. <laughs> so uh, we deserve the number five overall draft pick, which is great. Um, now we know that that's set in stone. Now everybody can start their mock drafts. Start oh, figuring shit. Get out ready who's going to be around. How many months of mock drafts do we have? <laughs> this is going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting because at least Michigan now just Michigan just scored. Okay, yeah, so what? They got a two score lead now. Yeah, they're about to be up 27-13. Nice. All right. I won't give you any Way more updates. Go, Stick to the podcast. Stick to the All podcast. Right. Come on, Kevin. Um, pull it together. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because now it's not so much like, man, we're like, we're pick 17. I don't know who's going to even be available at that point. Pick number five. Yeah, it's a little You've got easier. Some choices. Yeah. Uh, and especially when it comes out like, Who's gunning for quarterbacks? Who needs this? Who needs that? And I mean, Chargers need just about anything. So I guess it is still kind of a head scratcher to go like, okay, what position, what hole are we going to fill when it comes to the draft? But there's still so much time until that happens. So many moves that could potentially happen. And God bless, we still need a coach for God's sake yeah. and a GM. So we will get to that. And yeah, we're not getting a player unless we have people to select the players. Yeah. We so that's going to be, that'll be tough. We need a contestant first. Uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, Chargers are wasting no time getting the interviews underway. Uh, they've already set up uh, formally requested head coach interviews with uh, 49ers defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes per Jimmy Gar or per Garofalo, excuse me. Uh, Ravens offensive coordinator Todd Munkin per Rappaport. Uh, Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson per Pelissaro and Lions defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn per Pelissaro. I think I saw they the Raiders, the Raiders. Yeah, Dan something. Quinn. They asked they, for they, Dan I, Quinn too. I think they asked for and Dan Quinn. I already saw. Uh, yes, for Cowboys, Dan Quinn. That's per Jordan Schultz. So I wonder um, what happens. Like this game's over, they hire our coach immediately. Like, all right, guys. So. Uh, you know, Zoom. Should we do this on Zoom? Yeah, can I don't we do a group? Really, I don't think. We, yeah, like, can we do a group Zoom? Let's have you guys all come in at the same time. We want to be efficient with our time here. We got to get ready for a draft. Yeah, and I can't imagine the questions are going to be all that in depth. You know, what's your favorite color? 
If you, you know, were on a desert island, yeah. what would you bring with you? They won't be our ass bolt fam, that's for sure. No. Um, God, no. Um, but what I find interesting, though, very interesting, is that there's a whole bunch of other teams that have announced um, who they're interviewing for GM. And mm-hmm. we haven't, not one name has come out for us. So, that's true. Which pushes me even more to think they're going to go Harbaugh first, then figure that out once he's in and they've got everything Mm -hmm. situated so i just i keep seeing things and maybe i'm trying to like justify them and why they make a little bit more sense for my hypothesis um but it's 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 real (laughs) yeah it's uh they gotta dot their i's and cross their t's they got they can't just say we want harbaugh and go for him there's rules that they have to follow and so they're getting all of this yeah they got to get all of these guys out of the way yeah and then hopefully if everything goes according to plan we got our about coming in hot. So let's go. Um, all right. Well, looking at some uh, postseason quotes, uh, Justin Herbert Fresh showing cut. off the new haircut. Yeah, Fre- this is polarizing. People really don't like it, or like me, I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks fine. It's clean. Yeah, fresh. He got his hair for crying out loud. He gets one haircut a year. It's you know, let, it's, the it's flow time. will be back, folks. Yeah. Don't don't lose your minds. Like we've said in the past, he's virile. He's got a lot of that that you know energy you need to grow your hair. It's a lot mm-hmm. of that testosterone, all that shit. I can't remember exactly what it is. He's got a lot of it though, and mm-hmm. it'll be back by, in no time. Watch. Yeah. And uh, so they finally interviewed Herbert because they haven't really interviewed him since the injury, since losing mm-hmm. Staley and and uh, Tom Telesco and everything like that. Uh, but some of the quotes here from that interview saying, uh, Herbert said, we know it wasn't good enough this year, uh, but there are the right guys and the right mindset here. We have to fix little things, but I'm really looking forward to what we are able to do this offseason and getting back to it. Um, if they, being the front office, uh, came to me and they needed my viewpoint, my perspective, I'd love to offer it. Um and he basically just saying he's willing to help in any way possible uh, as the Bolts look for a new general manager and head coach, given his two cents. I, it's kind of fun. I kind of like that he said that. It, you know, in the past, you quarterbacks don't usually weigh in. Like, yeah, I'd love to have some input. Like, this doesn't feel like Justin would have said this two years ago. So if, even if it was a slip, like, I'd love to give him my perspective. It's still kind of cool, I think. Yeah, and he's not saying, like, I I need to be a part of this or it they need my st- seal of approval or anything like that. It's like, Hey, if they want my input, I'm happy to do it, you know? And I trust them on, you know, whatever decisions they end up making regarding personnel. Sure. Um, and then on the injury said, uh, I was told that I needed it. Uh, I was told uh, to have a normal functioning finger. I needed to have the surgery. Um, but he also predicts that he will expect to be able to start throwing again in about a month or so. Yeah. So it good. was, it was funny. They were asking him about it and he was like, yeah, they said they won't. If my finger is ever going to be normal again, I should probably have the surgery. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, I want to well, use it the way I should use it. Yeah, let's go <laughs> and ahead and I have do, been using it. Let's do that. I might need a little bit of surgery. So, yeah, um, yeah, that I, what a poor it sucks that he didn't just injure his non throwing hand, but then injured his throwing hand near yeah, the end a, there. It was a little bit of a take my strong hand situation yeah, <laughs> this really year was. for him. Um, hopefully we don't see that ever again in the future, but, uh, yeah, good that he got the surgery and good that he'll be back to normal as expected. You know, everything is going according to plan, no hiccups or anything like that. Um, they also interviewed, uh, Rashawn Slater, uh, on his thoughts on the season on the five and 12 season. Uh, the quote that is circling the rounds right now is saying, we never want to experience that shit again. <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah. Uh-uh. Never again. No, sir. I love that. He's a dog. Absolutely. Well, yeah, it's not just Herbert. It's not just Keenan Allen. It's not just Mike Williams. It's a whole team, a whole organization of people that are pissed off yeah. on how this season went. It shouldn't have gone this way. That wasn't the script going into this. And that's just what ended up happening, unfortunately. Um, they also interviewed Austin Eckler. And the quote that is circling the rounds now is, I'm not going to be with these guys anymore. And it's one of those journeys that I'll always remember. Uh, but sad that it has to end. Yeah, so. it didn't end well for him. Like you you caught me off guard with the stat because apparently he rushed 10 times for 11 yards. And yeah, there was he, like one point, it was like seven rushes for eight yards or something like that. Yeah. You know, like that has to be a typo. 
Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> it he wasn't. rushed 10 <laughs> times for 11 yards. And watching this Michigan game, if all things go according to plan, um, they run the ball a lot. So I think there's going to be a big change to our offensive line and a big change at running back if that if all things go according to our plans. Yeah. No, they almost had like, they had like 175 yards in like the first quarter. Yeah. Of rushing. And so. they did it all season. They're just a running, they're a very run heavy team. And, mm -hmm. you know, you wear people down. Like wa watching this game right now, it does not feel like any Charger game I've seen in a long time because we just haven't had a running game this dominant. Yeah. So I would love to see, you know, see that. But, you know, I, Austin's awesome. He came on our podcast a few times, did interviews, wish him nothing but the best. But I Absolutely. think that, that was the last time we saw him as a Charger for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it's it's just unfortunate because, yeah, we really enjoyed having him on this show. I loved his story, everything about him coming up and into the NFL. How, how can you not root for him? Absolutely. This was just not, and it just sucks that the, he was going out on like this kind of a year, as opposed to the last two years when he was rocking like 18 to 20 touchdowns a season. Yeah. Like that's and it, insane. And it's weird too. This is the year where he's like, you know, invest in me. I want to get paid. Right, and then he does well, what he did. Sadly, it, I feel like if that becomes your focus, you're not focused on the right things. And yeah, there was a lot of off the field talk that really wasn't conducive with what we put Austin Eckler to be. Yeah, you know the, his type of character. So I feel like there might have been a bit of distractions this year. Yeah, it just felt like a distracting year for him. Yeah. And not He's, keeping the eyes on the prize. Yeah. If somebody posted something like his whole stats, and then at the very end, they posted and was on 38 podcasts. Oh, wow. So he's been doing, because he's, he's got that, he's, he's got that, fan, and that's got to be frustrating for him being on a, you know, being a co host of a fantasy podcast and what he did, like one of the biggest, like, letdowns for most fantasy owners in all of fantasy football this year. Yeah. So it's tough. But we, we kind of we kind of predicted at the beginning of the year. We really did. We're like, it's going to be did. a new offensive coordinator. They were right. dinking, dunking him the whole year. And they were, it was basically the offense was set up for him. And mm -hmm. it just wasn't for him this year. Right. Just wasn't. Yeah. Um, let's see. Looking over at Chris Rim tweeted out uh, Chargers wide receiver Keenan Allen said, I don't want to go nowhere else. Allen said if a trade were to happen, he would only play for a few select teams. Uh, if it did come down to that, adios amigos. I'll get packed up in the off season or right before the playoffs, like them old heads. Yeah. So, don't want to go anywhere other than the Chargers. I love it. Why would you want to leave? You got Justin Herbert. Like, exactly. Freaking awesome, dude. You yeah. have a rapport. You guys are so on the same page, and you make it look easy. Look what he did. He had like twelve hundred yards this year. Yeah. In how many games? Thirteen. Yeah, something like that. That's and this huge. The last four games, yeah. That's huge. So I, I, this is the one Charger I want absolutely back next year. I'm, I'm pretty open everywhere else, but this is the one guy. When you're talking about the big money guys, that I definitely want back next year. Yeah. Um, and then looking over at uh, Corey Lindsley, Chris Rim also tweeted out Lindsley declined to go into the specifics of what his diagnosis is, uh, but said that doctors advised him that playing football put him at a higher risk of severe problems moving forward. And Daniel Popper also tweeted out the, the quote from the interview. Uh, Lindsley said there's a 99% chance he will be retiring. Yeah, he's got a new family. You know, he's got young kids. Like, you, yeah, that's a, that's a no-brainer, man. Yeah. That's I so mean, sad. We want him to play for us because he's so freaking good. But Well, yeah. I'm sure he wants to play as well. Obviously, he wouldn't have be a captain he wouldn't be as good as he was if he didn't want to be out there and yeah i, I mean i wonder if he's just saying 99 percent chance like this is basically how it's going to go but i wonder what that one percent chance is like I don't know. is there something that might somehow bring him back but i can't imagine some kind of i because we, we don't know what it is but maybe it disappears next time he gets checked up. I don't know. But everyone was saying that he looked a lot thinner. Like he lost a lot of weight. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. it looked like when Hardwick retired. Like he is that what he looks like now? He's a huge, big guy. I don't think he's quite to that extent. I, did, I didn't Hardwick. see a picture of what he looks like. So he does look, his frame just looks smaller because I'm. he hasn't been playing. I'm sure he hasn't been working out either. I'm sure he has to keep everything on an even keel for his heart. Um, but the quote here says, I mean, year 10. I don't know how many years I have left anyways, so it sucks. Obviously, that's not how I would have wanted to, this to end, but I can't complain. I can't be sad about 10 years in. It's 
uh, got to end for everybody at some point. I'm thankful for everything that I got to accomplish, everything, teams that I've been on, the people that I've met, uh, the friendships and the battles that we've had out there. And there's so much to be thankful for that I can't really be too upset. What a stud. Yeah, this is a guy you can't help but root for. Like, I just, I love I love him. I'm sad that this is how it went down. But, yeah, you know, there's more important things in football. Absolutely. Yeah, my heart breaks for him. It, you got to take care of yourself. And nobody, nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw this being a situation. And it's just really unfortunate that it is. So um, I'm glad that he's leaving on that kind of a note. I wish he could have left with, you know, Chargers doing better, but it is what it is. And thankful for him being a part of this team and, you yeah. know, l- helping Herbert learn things. He definitely, learn Herbert things. definitely learned from him. So yeah. good things, you know, the good things can be taken from it for sure. Absolutely. Uh, well, you can take some good things, folks, over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat. Uh, check out all the funny videos we got over there. We've got different tiers for you folks to join and Uh, There's so many good things to be had, and we've got a new Patreon member to shout out, and I'm talking about Combat Doc. Welcome to the party, pal. Thank you for joining the Patreon. We really appreciate it. Uh, And if you don't want to go to patreon.com slash charger chat, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there, t-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions and ask both fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. All right, folks, time to go on to our next segment, Ask Bolt Fam. Let's see what we've got for our season ender. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh, hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. That's what you do. I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like, totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And before we get into it, listen. <laughs> I love you guys. I love every single one of you. You are all beautiful, unique snowflakes, and you guys make us laugh. Uh, but some of you don't know when to stop typing. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. So I'm going to read everybody's question this episode, but going forward, it would really help me out. Tighten it up a little bit. If we could like <laughs> limit it to a paragraph, please. <laughs> like, because I got to read all these questions. I got to figure out how to put them together. And then I got to read them again on the podcast. And I just, I want to get, I don't want any, I don't ever want to leave anybody out, period. I appreciate all of you because you are all taking the time to write questions to us. And I greatly appreciate it. But just I, I don't want to I don't want to be the one to bring out the scissors because if I bring out the scissors, then I might cut something out there like, ree, oh, ree, ree, yeah, ree. I don't want to be wool dog scissor hands. No. I want to be <laughs> just wool dog, period. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so be judicious with your editing, please, in the future. I'm begging you because <laughs> I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be the bad guy. OK, oh, 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 oh. I'll do it. Nobody wants it. All right. So let's start off <laughs> with the <laughs> fucking the long one. <laughs> hey, it's an old favorite. It's <laughs> Big Red it. Bolts fan. Let's go. Who asked the question? This season is over. It seems so brief. And all that's left now is to play the Chiefs. They are who are resting. The one who does queef and runs like some caca is filling his briefs. And he whines <laughs> and he cries to the refs when he speaks. This rhyme I've penned before our last game. The one that will be played by, what's his name? Yet prevail we will, I boldly proclaim. Am I a prophet? Nay, you twit. That shit is lame. But know well, my friends, once Monday has come get your mind out of the gutter the shame our bolt fam vibe won't be quite the same our mood will be blue and that's a shame so we'll refresh and refresh and refresh again the news feed page for espn <laughs> hopeful to learn that our powder blue men will be riding into battle thanks to a few strokes of the pen with the coach we most covet and pay millions past 10 we shall rejoice proudly bolting the fuck up once again As I close out this rant and let this rave end, I contemplate how much time I might spend watching the playoffs to see if the trend of underdogs winning continues, my friend. Perhaps the Browns might beat them Ravens? 
But most important, and sorry if I offend, I hope and I pray for the Chief's reign to end. Okay, love you, bye, until the next rhyme I send. Oops, I almost forgot, I can't let this end without a question being asked again. It's called Ask Bolt Fam, not Babble Like a Hen. <laughs> so, what question should I ask, dear friends? P.S. Seriously, though, guys, I appreciate your relentless positivity. I personally needed it more than ever this season. Sorry for the tongue-twisting poems, Wooldog. They are usually drafted after I'm six-pack in and two and a half sheets to the wind. <laughs> I try to edit them later so they flow better and they aren't any spelling errors, uh, but that doesn't always work. I look forward to hearing all of what's happening in the offseason from my favorite source of all things charters. K, love you, bye. I think you can do long ones if they're like in poem form. Listen, we I don't want to be picking and choosing here. <laughs> I got to give a pass on this one. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't want to have to start getting out a word counter or anything like that. All right. But big Red Bolts fan. That's yes. awesome, dude. This was awesome. And uh, we appreciate the kind words. We really, our goal is not to be analytical. Our goal is not to be predicting our goal is to just have fun be goofy buttholes and just Classic. try to make you guys laugh so um and, and you make us laugh with this yeah awesome shit you do this was week. great i really appreciate it thank you big red bolts fan you said you have a question but i don't see you must have that must have been six pack <laughs> afterwards yeah and you didn't put the question in there so <laughs> um, i love it but we love it, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, let's move it on now to Mr. Peck R, who asked the question. As we gather here today on what was recently the official end of the Chargers 2023-24 season, I want to take a moment to reflect on this season. Yes, it didn't pan out as we hoped. We faced challenges, injuries, obstacles, coaching woes, and to many outcomes that weren't what we envisioned. But let me tell you this. In every setback, there lies an opportunity for growth, resilience, and strengthening our unwavering spirit. As part of the Bolt fam, I hold some things above most in my love for the Chargers, and I hope my Charger players to show some pride, uh, show the same, excuse me, uh, pride, honor, heart, and to be shamelessly positive. To me, these are not just words. They're pillars that define us and our fandom. They're also words that define our team. Despite the scoreboard not always being in our favor, our pride in this team, our heart to keep pushing and cheering, and the potential of what is to come burns in every Chargers fan's heart brighter than ever. We wear our Chargers colors, not just in victory, but in adversity, because our loyalty knows no bounds. Simply put, core Charger fans are hands down the best. We honor the dedication, the hard work, and the passion that players, our remaining coaches, and staff put into every single game. Our core players embody the true essence of sportsmanship, never giving up, never losing sight of the bigger picture. Mac, Herbert, Dick Perfect, and many others have shown us what it means to fight with honor, to play with integrity, and to give their all for the love of their family, fans, teammates, coaches, and the love they have for this game. The heart of this team beats within each one of us, it's the collective heartbeat that unites us, that keeps us coming back, game after game, season after season. It's what empties our pocketbooks year in and year out. It's the undying love for our Chargers, the shared memories of victory, and the solace we find together in the moments of disappointment. It's what fuels the Bolt fam to never stop yielding our hope, our ability to keep believing, and to stand by our Chargers unwaveringly through it all. Next, our shameless positivity. Despite the season, despite the scoreboards, there's a silver lining to every cloud. 2023-2024 has, at times, tested our resilience, taught us a lesson in perseverance, and has given us the, remi the reminder that the sun will always rise after the darkest night. We've witnessed flashes of perfection, monumental moments that remind us that the potential that lies deep within. So, my fellow Bolt fam, let's carry ourselves with unwavering positivity. Shamelessly celebrating the unwanted knowledge gained, uh, the moments of short-lived victories, and let's look to the horizon with hope. The heart of this team, the Bolt fan that we are, and our very own Charger Chat community is unbreakable. At the end of today, we could stand a bit taller, proud of our Chargers, knowing that more electrifying days are ahead. Remembering that it's not just about the wins and the losses that we encounter, it's about the voyage, the passion and the undying support that we fellow Bolt fans 
bring to the table. Our pride, our honor, our heart, and shameless positivity will reflect the numbers on the scoreboard. BTFU, Charger fans, this dynasty story is still being written. And together, like a phoenix, we'll rise from the ashes, revitalized, renewed, and more united now, more than ever. Now for my question. Were you inspired, I mean at all, by anything this season? I know I was. I'll start off with Dick Perfect in his electric radiance. Thank you guys for having the best dang old gosh darn podcast out there. BTFU, big old family trust respect. K, I love you, bye. Well said, Mr. Peckar. Well said, Thank sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's... That. It was a hard one. It was a hard season, but you know we're not going anywhere. Are you going anywhere? I'm not going anywhere. No. We're just gonna have to turn that frown upside down as soon no. as Michigan wins this championship in one minute and five seconds, and <laughs> <laughs> and they're taking a knee at the moment, and they're about to get uh, chase them around and douse them with a oh Gatorade God. bath, and and then he'll be our, he'll, then he'll hopefully be ours, <laughs> and then we'll have an amazing 2024. Come and beyond. Oh, they just oh Harbaugh just dodged the the Gatorade, the Gatorade? Bat, ah. and it hit a player. That was awesome. Yeah. He is still elusive. He's still quick. <laughs> He's he still got it. He still got it, folks. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> Kevin is. <laughs> oh, Kevin is just, just the, the excitement in his face. Like I want. I got. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, were you inspired by anything this season? Did anything inspire you? I think I think the best thing about the season probably was, I guess, being you know the older player on the team, Cleo Mack, and what he was able to do. And you know he was you know he's on his last bit of his career, and he was went out there and had one of his best seasons ever. So I think that's inspiring. That like even if you think somebody's down or out, they could still come out and surprise you like mm-hmm. crazy. So I think Absolutely. he was fan- he was fantastic. And then I got to go Dick Perfect because he's he's the he's the man. Yeah, I, I you could say the same thing about Keenan Allen. I think same thing a with lot Keenan. Of, yeah, a lot of chatter in the off season how he he's not the same old Keenan Allen. He can't you know make the same kind of catches anymore. He's not as productive. Whatever the situation, uh, but prove that that's not the case. He still got it. He still got juice in there, and uh, and can still put up over a thousand yards in a season, and still just kill it. I mean that that Minnesota game where he had over 200 yards and like two touchdowns. Yeah. I can't remember. He went out of his mind. Had. That was yeah. insane to see from a guy who's been in the league as long as he has. So, yeah. um, that, that, all of that was inspiring and yeah, the, the, you got to keep the faith. I mean, even Justin Herbert, I mean, going out there and fighting through his, you know, non throwing hand injury, yeah. which was clearly affecting him. He was always kind of favoring that hand and trying not to fall on it or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration still on this team that you can look to and to hope for. And, you know, even having to step up in a situation like Will Clapp, like I, I'm not saying that he was the best center in the league, but you got to go in and, and and take the place of the guy that who's been the team captain and who, you know, has been one of the best centers in the league. Now you got to go and step up and, that's tough to do. That, I mean, just mentally, that would mess with you. Sure. So, and to do it for as long as he had, I mean, that there's a lot of inspiring things. Again, it, you know, it's not always about the scoreboard. Sometimes it's just about the character and what it is that these guys do in the face of adversity. And and it's a lot, a lot of adversity this year. <laughs> a lot of adversity. <laughs> so we'll see what next year brings us. But Mr. Peckar, thank you for Thanks, asking brother. the question. Let's move it on now to Darius. Who asked the question? Do the guys hate Herbert? Why did the team let him go on live TV with that haircut? They gave Staley a nice cut at the barber, but they can't look after our boy Herbert. It looks like a high school haircut. Certified fresh, and I don't appreciate the tone. I think he looks handsome. I think he looks handsome. I think he's a good looking man. I think he's a good and looking I man. To take that back. I want you to take that back big time. No, it that dude. If, go to your room and think about it. If you want to see a bad haircut, you go back to when he shaved it. That was a bad haircut. This is like he's about to go do some work in the off season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's got some he's got some parties to go to. He's got some stuff to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's go. I think it's a fine looking haircut. I, I think, think so too. Yeah. The guy's got a great set of hair. And uh, if you don't like it, if it's not your cup of tea, whatever, leave him alone. Let the guy 
have his hair cut the way he wants. Oh, I love that. I love that people are just so locked into his hair. I love that so much. That's funny. It Sam. is hilarious. Samsonite. I, mean, I was way, way off. off. But uh, yeah, his hair's fine, Darius. It's fine. Well, welcome, but and welcome, but, but it's fine. fine. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you for asking thanks, the question, thanks, dude. Uh, let's move it on now to Andrew Ramsey. Andrew, who asked the question. Judge and Chip, baby! It's finally over, baby! The second most comical season of my fandom ever, baby! I want Kyle the coach to take our ass to school on a coach's corner of all the sorry-ass plays we witnessed this season, baby! Now to the question, baby! Does the divide from coach to players run deeper than Staley, baby? Only two carries for Kelly, baby? An inactive spiller, baby? Oh, and that god awful performance by Eck with 10 carries for 11 yards, baby? Is that more or not having Zion? And then Pleasant starting for Jamari getting poked in the eyes, baby? Or did Giff give himself a big cup and say the hell with it? And your incentives? Y'all not coming back next year, baby? They were never getting blown out at any point and still could have used the ground game, baby? I know Easton had his stick shift in another drive that game, baby. But still, baby, love you all, baby. Can't love you, bye. Baby! <laughs> I think they were trying to give Eckler the best opportunity to reach his incentive. I think that's all yeah. it was. I They kept giving him opportunities when he wasn't getting anything done. And I, I don't, you can blame that they're switching out linemen, but he's been doing this pretty much all year. This yeah. isn't like he's lost some, a step or something. I don't know what's going on. Doesn't look as fast. Doesn't look as elusive. So I mean, it didn't do him any favors. This was certainly one of his worst rushing performances, if not the worst rushing performance ever yeah. by him. And yeah, I don't know that it necessarily runs deeper than Staley. I mean, these every every interview with any of the players has been like they love GIF. I mean, they're, they're willing to go out there and fight for him. That's the only thing I wish at least one of these games would have been a win for GIF because of everything that they said about it, you know, and like the idea of getting rid of Staley and bringing in GIF. It's just like, I would love for them to at least get one win. Obviously, that means changing the draft position and all that nonsense. But sure. From a competitive standpoint, I wanted these guys to go out and just try to get one for GIF just so it felt like one for the giffer get one for the giffer all right <laughs> sorry but, that's a total dad joke <laughs> it's uh it's just unfortunate and unfortunate for easton too i would have loved to seen easton at least get one win under his belt he and, did look good in those games though all things considered you know what i mean i mean yeah it, it's it's just unfortunate that it ended the way that it did but yeah hopefully from the ashes a phoenix will rise and that phoenix being justin herbert with two very healthy hands with healthy <laughs> fingers and his feathers and his I wing. I didn't know what I was. I thought you were going to say something else. Too Look, healthy. There he goes. Very healthy hands. <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, uh, Andrew, I don't think it was quite the case, but uh, that and, and the other thing that he mentioned too about like Spiller being inactive. Yeah, that Why? was weird. I don't know. I, I mean, like he really just must not be like good at all that must have i mean if we want to talk about busts that feels like the biggest one just because we he hasn't seen the field he's barely seen it and it's been like and anytime he has outside of preseason it's not been all that great i'm very interested to see new coach new coaching staff come in evaluate the roster like i said before they're going to be very i'm sure relentless ruthless about it and we're gonna see what were the what were issues, mm -hmm. not just like guys like, well, they're not giving him a chance. Like he's just not good enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. we'll, we'll find out pretty quick. We will. Andrew, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Chance. Certified fresh. Who asked the question? With us uh, being in cap hell, I have to ask: Do you guys see us keeping Keenan Allen next year? I really hope so. I think so. I think they're going to restructure him one more time and add maybe like two more, add like one or two years onto the back of it. And then just that'll, that'll be it. And then they'll lower it just enough to make it worthwhile to keep him on. Um, but I, he's the one guy I want to keep, you know, when you're talking about the big names, the Williams, the him, there's Joey Bosa, Cleo Mack, those four guys are making the top two money at their position. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. 
that, that's that, that's absolutely crazy and for like the league it's not just the top two on the team like you have like the top yeah. two guys in those positions on your team and none of them played one of them played the whole season right. so I'm I'm okay with saying goodbye to some of this stuff having to start over obviously and then I don't want Keenan to go anywhere I really want to keep Keenan because he hasn't lost anything his game was never built on on crazy straight line speed yeah. it's about being a just a a, a guy that knows exactly where to be. He's very seasoned. He has great control of his body and great route runner. So I don't think that's going to slow him down at all. He's going to exactly. continue being himself. No, if if Keenan Allen ended the season with 500 yards and two touchdowns and a multitude of drops, like you could go like, okay, yeah, this is clearly not going to work out in the foreseeable future. But he had one of his best seasons ever. The guy's a team captain. Yeah. Justin, I'm sure, loves him because he keeps throwing him the ball. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the chemistry, the leadership, the everything liability. is there. Yeah. And even if with a new regime coming in, they're not just going to look at it and go like, eh, he's older. Eh, he's been in the league for too long. It's time to get rid of him. It, it, you got to hold on to this guy. You, yeah. He's got to finish his career as a Charger. And uh, please, please. Me, give, me, give me one more year with Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Two, maybe one or two. You're talking me two. Um, all right, there you go. Chance, thank you for asking the question. Uh, let's move it on now to Andrew Gordon, who asked the question. You think we should consider Ron Rivera as our DC next year from over yonder? Been hankering for a hard nose getting away with murder on the field defense since he left. P.S. Yippee ki yay, fifth pick, mother. Okay, love you bad. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't think Ron Rivera is going to take a step back and be a coordinator again. Like he's had a long career. Um, he had that health scare not that long ago. Right. I, I don't think he's. I don't think he's doing it. I don't think he's coordinating. So I don't think. I think he's going to head coach or not. You know, he's been a head coach for far too long. Mm-hmm. Um, two two different teams, right? So yeah, I just don't. I don't see him taking any defensive coordinating jobs like at all. But would you consider it if that was something that he was interested in as a defensive coordinator? Possibly, but it's all going to be predicated on our head coach. I won't yeah, what our absolutely. head coach wants, yeah. but um, I, but I don't know. He hasn't been a defensive coordinator for freaking ever. So right. I know he's got you know he's a part of making the game plan and what they what they're doing over there. But um, I don't know. I think there might be some some better options. I have a feeling it's going to be more dependent on the head coach. And I feel like whatever head coach comes in is going to instill that hard nose, getting away with murder on the field defense, regardless of whether or not Ron Rivera is the defensive coordinator or not. I definitely, I would not be mad if Ron Rivera ended up being the DC by any stretch. Uh, but I think it's going to be more dependent on the head coach. I just don't, I just don't think he's going to be a, in the, in real world terms, I don't think he's going to coordinate. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Andrew Gordon, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Jacob McKinney, who asked the question. Ranch or (laughs) barbecue? (laughs) Want to (laughs) know? Ranch or barbecue? Jacob McKinney asking the hard hitting questions. (laughs) Because they're kind of in different categories. Like, oh, very much. Like, without barbecue, you don't get like, barbecue like sandwiches and ribs and mm-hmm. bri- like i think i'd have to go barbecue i'm 100 percent barbecue i've never been yeah. a ranch guy period like just this is never appealed to me i could the, i could get by without the ranch i, I could I'd, too. Th- I'd have to be a full barbecue guy i like fun. okay i'll take this back i like ranch seasoning mm-hmm. i don't like ranch dressing goopy garbage no <laughs> get that out of my face But like, I'll say this, when Kevin has made fries and thrown some ranch seasoning on there, uh, chef's kiss. Takes it to the next level. Delicious. Yeah. So yes, I'm all for ranch seasoning, but if we're talking about the ranch sauce or barbecue sauce, sauces, yeah. But I love, I'm a big ranch guy. I do love ranch. I might throw some. That's fine. You can have mine. If you get shitty pizza, (laughs) there's no better way to fix shitty pizza than throw some ranch on it. I'm just going to say it. Say it. I said it. (laughs) Done. All right, Jacob McKinney, I think we're a couple of barbecue boys over here, but thank you for asking the question. (laughs) Barbecue boys. Let's move it on now to Dirty Ferdy. Oh, shit. Who asked the question? Okay, Adam, Kevin, and Kyle are contestants on The Voice. 
Dean Spanos, John Spanos, and Michael Spanos are the judges. Pick a head coach you want, but you can't pick the obvious Harbaugh. Pick a song and sing a short part of it and put some heart into it. Get the judges to turn their chairs to pick you after your song. Just introduce yourself as the coach and explain why you are the best for the job. Have fun. K love you. Bye. Kyle is so glad he's not here for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the other thing, Ferdy. Ferdy. You're asking us to personify a coach that we don't want. Yeah. Why am I? <laughs> I can't go out shucking and jiving as Dan Quinn. Ben because I don't Johnson. want Dan Quinn or Ben Johnson or any of these other yahoos. I want Harbaugh. I want to go out there as Harbaugh. So I'm going to sing poorly, and I don't want these guys to turn their chair around because I don't want them to pick me. I want them to pick Harbaugh. Yeah, pick Damn Harbaugh. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to have fun with this, but I can't. I, I don't know how I could pitch myself as a coach that I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, dude, I just had a dream about Harbaugh the other night. And, like, no no joke. Like, we hung out. He's a pretty great guy. <laughs> in per- he's a lot taller in person. <laughs> Were you looking up at him? Yeah, he's pretty tall. You you know, your neck he's not bit. that, he's, you know, not that tall. Like, I'm pretty tall, but, like, okay. he's, he's, he's taller You could just than feel me. he had a taller presence. Yeah, he might not have been taller than me, just his aura was taller than me. Mm. Like, his, his winning edge was taller than me. <laughs> But I don't want to leave you without a song. I feel like we should save this for Kyle. Kyle cannot just squeeze out of this. I think we have to. Look, is it okay, Ferdy? Well, you're not going to be able to answer us. <laughs> yeah. Ferdy, Ferdy we're gonna... <laughs> let us know. We'll wait. So, Ferdy, here's what we're going to do. I'm waiting for it. We're going <laughs> to copy and paste this into the next we're one. waiting. And we'll ha- Adam and I will have a full week to prepare what we want to do. And then Kyle's going to be just sitting there like, bah, 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 what do I do? <laughs> It's, well, I think it's we, pretty fun. If we wait a week, we might already know who our coach is. And then we'll just so, <laughs> we'll break into a court, uh, you know, organized routine of singing and dancing. Of something. Yeah. <laughs> Kick line. So let's go there. Let's make our escape. Come, Come on, on, let's go, go there. there. I can't, I don't know the world. <laughs> Can, Can you, you take, take me high? to the place that i want to go so everybody's turned their chair around we won john harbaugh (laughs) yeah hi my name's dan quinn and i think you should hire john harbaugh okay bye (laughs) i'm not the right man for this job i am not right i i sing more than i coach all right good (laughs) night (laughs) <laughs> let's go all right dirty ferdy thank you buddy for <laughs> sorry <question>. dude <laughs> let's move it on now to the bryce is right bitch nice who asked the question <laughs> if jim harbaugh becomes the next chargers head coach is there a good chance that harbaugh teaches herbert the good old flintstone footstep is herbert's new drop back fruity pebbles more like herby pebbles Fruity fla- Flutie Flakes have no idea what's coming. If you saw our Patreon, our last one, if you're part of our Patreon, we broke Patreon. down... Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. Charger Chat. <laughs> um, Kyle, the coach, Duggan broke down the uh, er- early 90s um, twinkle toes, <laughs> little fluttery, you know, back, back, his, uh, drop back, 20 back foot drop, back drop, <laughs> drop back. Yeah, backdrop. His twenty, his twenty step backdrop, and uh, and all its glory, and it was a, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I think he should bring that back. It is eye catching to see him with squared shoulders just shuffling back a little <laughs> bit to take his read. But yeah. uh, that I mean, hey, listen, if he feels like it helps, I have a feeling Harbaugh will teach Herbert a lot of things. Yeah, that he's going to teach kind of experience. He's going to teach him what it's like to have a running game and not have mm. to do everything by yourself. And yeah. then he's going to open him up to like when he wants to take shots, be awesome. It's just going to be like well rounded, hard as football. Like <laughs> he's kind of the quarterback that he really wants because he's a badass and he like nice. will fight through it, you know, whatever because he's tough mm. as shit. Nails, right. bro. Nails. 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 All right. <laughs> All right. The Bryce is right, bitch. Thank you for asking the question. <laughs> nice. But let's move it on now to a Thier Kadir. A Thier. Who asked the question? <laughs> Judge and Chet, my love. Wool dog, Kevin, my best friend. And can't forget about my lovely cow, the coach, baby. Now to my question. 
Kevin, my baby, this is for you. Nice. Put your hat on. You are the new GM working with Harbaugh. First thing you will do, extend Allen and Mac, or sit with Herbie and ask, what does he need on defense and offense? Let me hear you, my baby. Thank you, my boys. F*** the entire AFC. Coach Harbaugh and Herbie will play in New Orleans in 2025, baby. Is this for me? It's for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks, Athir. Hello. It's for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, my all right, let me put my GM hat on. Yeah, get it on. First thing I do, Make I sure I call Trey Pipkins into my office and tell him to kick rocks. Oh wow. Um, that'd be my first my first I know it's not his question, but that's I, if I were the GM, that's what <laughs> that's I would do. You're out of here. You're out of here, kid. Um, but no, I'd sit down with I'd sit down with uh Justin, see what he what he wants, what he likes, what he needs. He's been here longer than I have. So what are your thoughts? Give me the lay of the land. And then I extend Alan for sure. So you do it all. I do it all. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't extend Alan and Mac. I extend Alan and cut Trey Pipkins. (laughs) Do you not want to extend Mac? I don't know if we can. Like, he's still so freaking expensive. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would rather him over uh, Joey right at this point in time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. A, a, a player that actually is on the field playing is my personal preference. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, yeah, well, sure. Let's extend them both. I'll sit with Herbie first, and then I'll extend them. Okay. Based on, I'm sure that's what Justin's going to say. Yeah. So, all of the above is what I'm hearing. D. <laughs> <laughs> I was really good at the scantrons in high school. I was just like D. When I didn't D. know the answer, let's just go D. D. They wouldn't put it there if that wasn't the answer, right? It's gotta be D. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Athir Kadir, thank you for asking the question. <laughs> Stupid, terrible answer. <laughs> let's move it on now to Bolt Dan, who asked the question. Give me vatos. First thing, thank you guys for making this past season fun. Listening to you guys, always entertaining and therapeutic in our losses. Plus, it was good meeting you guys at our diehard boat club, Ventura Canopy, and helping promote our toy drive. Okay, question. Who, what, uh, who do we need to draft? It's a good question. It's a great question. It's a question that I think will hit every Ask Bolt fan between now and draft day. Yeah, so the two guys I'm looking at at five, in all honesty, it's... Tight end and wide receiver seem like the players that if we stay at five, there's going to be two guys there for sure that we could take. That'll be awesome. Brock Bowers, um, tight end would be freaking rad mm-hmm. and neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy's that guy's awesome yeah. um, from LSU. So I think those two are, would be really great at five. I'm the more I look at it, I'm more interested in moving back, like maybe six picks, five, six picks, mm-hmm. still getting somebody awesome, but just getting more. Um, but I think, Personally, right now, we've been yelling about it from the mountaintops for all of last season was a tight end because that's 100% what we're missing. If you looked at the tight end play in that last game, it was abysmal. It was, oh, yeah, it was terrible. So I'll go, I'll go Brock Bowers. Yeah, I, I feel like Brock Bowers is, uh, I listen, speaking as a guy who hasn't seen a single play of Brock Bowers. I can lean heavily on Kevin and Kyle's promotion of the guy and any tight end that they feel like should be on this team uh, because it is a tight tight end is a position that we, like Kevin said, we've been screaming about this. You know, we've had tight ends that have been fun, you know, have had moments like Gerald Everett and Donald Parham. Like those are guys that have had some moments where it's like, Hey, that's kind of cool. This is fun but they just haven't been, you know, either healthy the entire season or they just haven't been like the overall package. We need, of a we need tight end a, like Hunter Henry. We need Hunter a Henry was awesome when we had him. Yeah, we need somebody that is a big guy that can catch uh block when he needs to and I feel like again based on the opinions of others, <laughs> Brock Bowers would be that guy. Well, and our offense isn't going to get better until we start running the ball. Um, so I really feel like we need to shake up the line a little bit. We're, I think we're going to need to draft a center early on, yeah. uh, Brock Bowers and right tackle. If we went like first four rounds was like center tackle tight end and something else in there. Um, I, that would be, I would make <laughs> me happy because I just watching that 
that national championship game, they ran the ball. They ran the ball so much yeah. and they were so efficient at it. Like he's just, that's clearly identity. When he had Frank Gore in San Francisco, like Frank Gore went out of his freaking mind. Yeah. Like it was so fun to watch. So um, we're going to, there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be some major changes to the offensive line. Just had a necessity for a couple and then we'll see what happens. But, you know, we're not getting it done and that's, we'll be such a better team if we can run the ball. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Bolt Dan, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Carl Bolingtoft. Bolingtoft. And shout out to Taylor. Taylor. It's draft day. Pick five is here. You have Bowers, Neighbors, and all the offensive tackles available on the board. You are on the you are the new Charger GM. Do you stick and pick or do you trade down? And how much will it take for you to trade down? This spring, a franchise's future rests on the shoulders of one guy in. How do we help Herbert? Rated R. <laughs> all right. Well, Kevin Hardy kind of alluded to this. About but I didn't know all, ta- back. all the offensive tackles would be available. Because the Notre Dame, it was a Joe Alt, I think. The guy's... If he's there at five, like, I don't know. You look at the positions that you spend the big money on, right? Mm. What are the positions you spend crazy money on? It's it's quarterback, it's tackle, and it's edge rusher. Mm-hmm. So if you can get one of those three in the in the f- first five picks, you do it because you're just going to have to pay that s- down the road somewhere. Right. You might as well get a guy in a rookie deal that's going to help your, help your quarterback, help your team. So if... If the Notre Dame tackles there, I, I would consider that, truly consider that. I I don't know how that would work for left tackle, right tackle swing, how they would do that. Clearly, our left tackle's locked down right now. Um, I just want as much help for Herbert. I don't want him to get pressured like he's been pressured on the right side of the line all year. Um, I just, I, I, we going to have to make our offensive line better, but that's, what's so cool about this fifth pick. There's going to be so many freaking names available. And I I don't think I've never picked one of these, right? So, uh, great, you know, grain of salt, (laughs) do do what you want. It it is funny. I mean, like last year we were like, we don't know who we're going to pick. And and that was because we don't know who's going to be available now. We don't know who we're going to pick because there's an embarrassment of riches sitting there at pick five that Pretty could much. be anybody. Yeah. So it all depends on what you feel like is the biggest position of need. And, you know, what can you get by with? Who's even going to be on this roster? You know, when it comes time for the new head coach and the new GM to like sit down and be like, all right, let's figure out what we're taking <coughs> yeah. into next year. What, who are we going to pick up in free agency? And then how are we going to address this draft? Because, if you don't trade back, there's probably going to be a lot of, you know, undrafted free agents filling roster spots on this team. When, so, yeah, yeah and you look, I, I feel like trading back would be the way to go to answer Carl, Carl's question. The, the, the more I think about it, too, also look at the four the four players that are getting paid crazy money right now for our team. Yes. Two edge rushers. Yes. Two wide receivers. Yes. It would make sense to replace one of those with that fifth pick. Absolutely. Wouldn't it? Because then you can release one of them, you shift somebody in, you're getting a top five talent. So uh, there's a part of me that's maybe says, you know, neighbors might be a good, I'm like walking around in circles now. I got to wrap my head around this, but in in terms of like where we're at money wise with the team, it would be a lot easier to like go off on one of those two positions. Yeah. Um, And then you can save a lot of money somewhere. Absolutely. You can make argument for just about any position outside of, you know, quarterback kicker punter like you can make an argument for you know linebacker being a a first round pick or like you said edge rusher or wide receiver i mean those those are all great arguments or right tackle like it's just gonna be wild to see i'm excited we're gonna get into this a lot more i gotta start doing some serious research this year big time um i'm more for trading back i like the the mentality that kyle has about having you know not so many a Roster talents, a lot more Bs, a lot, you know, trade back, get a couple of B level talent. And honestly, depending on what the needs are, some of these other teams, depend and how far you trade back, you might still have somebody like Brock Bauer sitting there. I mean, this last draft, we didn't see a tight end get picked until late in the first round, if I remember correctly, or yeah, in the second I th- round. I think he's a little different. I think they're saying he's like one of the best tight end prospects in like years. Ever. 
like mm. ever. <laughs> like okay. that it's just the athleticism. And basically he's just like a giant wide receiver who, who can block. Mm-hmm. Like and is crazy athletic. So but I mean then, then you think you start thinking of do you think of him as like a wide receiver and wide receiver production? Because mm-hmm. that's what he did at Georgia. Then it makes it a little easier to like, oh, I'm getting a blocker and a crazy ass wide receiver that's mm-hmm. uh, we call a tight end. So <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fun. I mean, and that's the other thing, too. I mean, some of these guys that right now we're talking about being like, oh, man, they're going to be taken in the first five or ten spots. Sometimes we've seen it where, like, guys can have, like, a bad pro day and they drop. Their stock drops drastically. So yeah, somebody I don't know. released some weird pictures of them the morning of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, we're talking about guys right now that, you know, they could have a bad pro day or maybe, you know, God forbid they get an injury of some kind, then all of a sudden that stock drops immediately. So. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to see, you know, who's who are going to be the quarterback hungry teams that are drafting behind us mm-hmm. that are worried about other teams possibly getting a quarterback, you know, around that number five pick um, and seeing, you know, how far back could we go? You know, if we're only going back a few spots, that might be a gamble to try to be like, all right, we're going to move back a few spots and. All these yep. other teams don't necessarily need wide receiver. Maybe we get Malik Neighbors at, you know, pick nine or ten. Or I don't well, know. I, I've seen a couple people have mocks where he's not in the top nine picks. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like you can trade back and still get a Malik Neighbors, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. Uh all right. Well, Carl, Taylor, thank you guys. Appreciate you for asking the question. Moving on now to Leo, who asked the question. Damn, this shit tastes good. Top five pick and Harbaugh rumors that will make any Chargers fan cry. And more importantly, any bitch ass Raiders fan cry if we get Harbaugh. I'm going to want Raiders fans tears to put in my motherfucking coffee. In either case, the motherfucking question trade back and possibly get more picks to round out the roster or stand, stay put and get a difference maker. If not Harbaugh, would the head coach from Washington be a decent backup plan? As always, Great to motherfucking be here, and as always, K love you bye. And just so a motherfucking clear, I mean University of Washington, not the tire fire NFL T. Well, we already answered. I threw this still in. I didn't want to mix it with Carl's because even though he is asking about you know stay put or fall back, that extra question of if not Harbaugh, would we would the head coach from Washington, uh, and that's uh, Kalen DeBiller, yeah. uh, be a decent backup plan i say no and i i think the reason being is harbaugh just has way more experience uh in rising not just college teams but nfl caliber teams he has that ability or at least that experience of working with an nfl team i mean when you look at somebody like urban meyer who really only knew college and then came into the nfl and realized oh these are grown ass men and I, I gotta suck. kick them to make yeah. them do what I want them to do. Yeah. It doesn't always work out. And I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen with Kalen, but I think if you can't, if you, God forbid, if you don't get Harbaugh, you want to have a, somebody that has experience in the NFL and coaching NFL caliber players, not just college players. And that's yeah, that, all that Kalen's experience has been is college. Well, I haven't heard him going to the NFL. I think that that program is just getting started with what, you know, where they're at right now. So yeah. I think that's realistic, but there's also that there's a huge jump from, from college to the pros. And I think Harbaugh is just the safest of all the pick. Like I feel so safe and comfortable right. with that just because he's done it everywhere and he's been successful everywhere. That, yeah, so, and that's the thing is the success. If he just had been in every, everywhere and he's like, you know, middle of the road or, mm-hmm. you know, four and 12 or something like that, like he'd be like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he's got experience, but does he win? It's like, no, this guy wins and just won as we saw today. God, God just won the freaking national championship for God's yep. sakes. Yeah, he's unstoppable. So, so, yeah. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I, I honestly, until that's not an option, like I'm not ready to like. All right, let me look up some backup plans. Like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be a backup plan <laughs> guy yet. You know, that I think there's going to be probably, if you had to go backup plan, like, pro, you know, one of these coordinators that did really well. I don't, there's not really a lot of head coaching, uh, previous head coaches that are going to just move to us. They have like a head coach that have been demoted to a coordinator and now they're going to come back up and try it again. Like, do you, are you excited about that? Does that sound exciting to you? No, it doesn't. 
Come on, Span. I just pay the man his money. Yes. Splice the I, fault. Yes. Get that group interview done. Yeah, get that. Go knock on Harbaugh's door. <laughs> yeah, get that the Zoom hangout finished. <laughs> call it a day and move on. <laughs> get the deal done. All right. Leo, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Cameron Motts, who asked the question. Sure, fresh. Okay. Hey, guys. I don't watch too much college football, but what are the differences between MHJ versus Neighbors? Also, I've been listening to Matt Money, and he's starting to talk me into taking an elite right tackle at pick five. Thoughts? Well, I'm a big dumb dumb that don't know nothing. Kev, what do you got? Uh, it's 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 tough because they're both elite guys. Like Marvin Harrison's a giant. He's six four, crazy fast. Um, consistent production. He had like 1,200 yards two years back to back. Um, Malik Neighbors came on big this year, like went out of his mind. He had, he had like 14, 17 touchdowns, somewhere in there. Um, they're both would be huge assets. I think Marvin Harrison is just, it's just a big dominant wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, Malik Neighbors is a little smaller, but I, I think either way you could be, you're in good shape if they're on your team. They're going to make your wide receiving core. They're, they're number ones, 100%, whatever team they go to. Mm. They're that, they're that good. So there's, there's not a huge difference with the way I'm looking at it in terms of like, you know, besides just their body type, one's a lot taller, but mm-hmm. um, both amazing wide receivers. And then, yeah, I mean, we've, Kevin's already kind of talked about with the, Elite right tackle is available at a pick five. Like I, that's I, what his appetite. I didn't hear him say that. That must have been on the newest uh, episode. But yeah, I'm on the same page. Like I make the offensive line the best it could ever be. You know what I mean? Like what is it? Puka Nakua was dra- drafted in the sixth round or whatever, seventh right. round, and he had. Look at him. Like yeah. you can get production. You can get guys like this other places in the draft, like the mm-hmm. Tank Dells, like the guys that are in the second, third round. You know, I, I want the best of the best if the number one tackle is there he's gonna make your offensive line better it's just a fact it just is so but would um, you be willing to give up not getting brock bowers or neighbors to take that if he's tackle if he's there yeah i would yeah yeah that's a big those are big money positions that you're i my favorite player on the chargers is justin herbert Mm -hmm. i want him to play in every game of course. I want him to be safe and have a long career. Mm-hmm. What do you, how do you do that? You get him the best offensive lineman. Sure. So I that by doing that, it does other things for me. Um, and it's not just a you know great wide receiver that he can throw to. It's like he's going to keep him safe. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm down for all of it. I think a tackle would be the boring choice because we've done it. Like we've done offensive linemen like three out of a the lot. last four years. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it it is the way, it's how you build your team. It's like, you know, the in the trenches, guys that are mean spirited individuals that kind of drive what you're all about. And if that's what that tackle is, whatever, whoever's available there, mm-hmm. look at it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Cameron Motts. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Nikon. Heard my fresh. Who asked the question? Echolet God. Would it be safe to say that the Chargers need a bigger and downhill running back? Every run is always down the middle. <laughs> I think they absolutely need to re- reevaluate their entire running back room. Um, yeah. Just. Especially, I mean, Eckler's not coming back. No. Josh yeah, Kelly has shown flashes, but. And you don't have the money to go spend on a free agent running back. Your right. best option is to find a stud in the you know third, second, third, fourth round. Mm-hmm. That's your best. That's your best bet. Yeah. Um. Because we don't. It's not really that many options. And like, yeah. you're going to be piecemealing it together, um, until the money, you know, more money becomes available. I we we just need to get better at the draft. We need to be able to have more players be immediate impact guys. A hundred percent. So hopefully, whoever comes in is making these selections has a better, a bit better luck. Right. Isn't just picking a guy to ride the bench or to no. be a healthy scratch like no deve- I don't want to hear the the developmental player I don't want to no. hear that ever again yeah I just I'm tired of hearing that shit we'll develop for a draft pick develop develop in college and then we'll see later if you're a yeah. seventh round develop developer cool but there's also maybe a puka Nakua out there that could be contributing right away exactly and maybe it's coaching maybe it's getting the right guys in there and understanding 
you know, what you can get out of them and get the most out of them. So big time. Sky's the limit over here. Yeah. I like that. There you go. Nikon, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to DJ Jones, who asked the question. Howdy, y'all. I've got a juicy question for y'all. Now, with the many roster position groups that need to be upgraded and filled, how would y'all go about trading a player like Bosa or Williams for more picks while also getting your guy a pick five like MHJ, Neighbors, Bowers, or O'Doons? Kayla, you buy. Uh, that's interesting. It's basically doing the same thing. It's it's trading down without trading down. You're just trying to get you know draft capital. So right. if if you're gonna you're not gonna be able to afford one of these guys, try and go get some draft picks. You know, fill your team out. Let the new you know leadership pick the guys they want that are gonna fit them. You know what I mean? Right. So I I, I don't think that's a bad idea. The idea I still it's crazy to think that you would get rid of Bosa. Like that, it's just a crazy thought because he's been so good for us in the past. But maybe it's a year where you, you can get more than if you you didn't do it this year. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's you know kind of having your cake and eating it too. If you can clear up cap space by getting rid of some of those bigger bigger cap hits and then still maintaining your number five position, I don't know. I with as many positions as as we talk about. Like you said, Kevin, there's not really going to be an opportunity to pick up a lot of free agents, or at least not any big name free agents or like over the moon free agents. So it feels like we need to have like eight or nine picks, you know, or 10 picks in this draft just to fill some of those spots and then take a, you know, chance on some of these undrafted free agents and seeing if any of those guys can come in and fill some of those positions. Cause it, seriously, about half of this team is going to be gone next year it's going to be wild to see what this team ends up looking like i, th- I think it'd be interesting is if you did trade you know bosa williams whatever combo whatever mm-hmm. got a couple picks yeah but then also traded back just a couple not like going back deep into the first but like going yeah, back to I like mean. eight and now next thing you know you got a, all these guys on you know granted the you know you're paying a lot more for first, second, and third round talent than you are like later rounds, obviously. Absolutely. They're more expensive. Yeah. But it's a lot more manageable than having to go shell out tons of money for free agent and exactly. free agency. And exactly. look look what look what the Rams just did. They're in the exactly. f- in the playoffs. F- playoffs. Yeah. Like playoffs. what the f- what the what is going on? So yeah. Yeah. Just get the right guys picking them and we'll be good. Cause you can't miss. If you go with that method, you can't miss. You can't because you're miss. you're getting rid of some amazing players. You better know exactly who they are and how to utilize them as soon as they land at the the new new beautiful facility that mm. we're gonna have. That's right. Love that. All right. Well, there you go. DJ Jones. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Anthony Tony Francis. Nice. Who asked the question? The Chargers season is over. Now, let's go Michigan. <laughs> let's go Harbaugh. Once Jim Harbaugh signs with the Chargers, do you think we'll get our own version of the who's got it better than us? Nobody. Hype up chat. What would your version be? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, he, they did just win. So they did. Michigan, Michigan. And, let's go. Uh, and victory. Um, so who's got it better than us? Nobody. Hmm. I don't know. It's a good question. Um, yeah, what could it be? I started to think like who's charging, not us. <laughs> 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 Look, they're not charging anymore. Do we charger? No. 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 <laughs> Are Ooh, we that... chargers? Yes. Do we charger? No. <laughs> Break. We do not say charger in this facility. Break. <laughs> we don't use that here. <laughs> yeah. Not in this house. That would be uh, nice if that's no longer a thing. A chargering. Yeah. That'd be cool. I would love for that to be taken out of the dictionary. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah, it would be. That would be a lot of fun because there really isn't any chant. It is always weird to watch a game at, at somebody else's home field, and something happens like third down or a touchdown or something like that, and you hear the crowd chanting. I don't know what the hell they're saying, but it's like, what? It, 
They're all independent contractors. They there's no <laughs> the, no one's come together. There's been no meetings before. Some guy Everyone's, on the soundboard just hits a button and it sounds like a crowd chant. Charge. No. That's all we got. <laughs> that is all we have right now is but da 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 charge. But yeah. I would love to I would love for there to be a chant of some kind. That would really just ins- that would instill a whole nother level of culture with this team. And it doesn't need to be fancy. Literally the Vikings go skull. Yeah. Like that's Skull. Yeah, like what what if we did Skull? <laughs> what if we do something scary? I don't know. I don't have anything good right now. <laughs> Were you about to say Zool? Zool. Try from Ghostbusters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Zool. <laughs> um yeah. yeah. Hey, put down your chant in the comments. Let's see what uh Let's what you it. got up your sleeve. Um but there you go. Anthony Tony Francis, thank you. For asking the question. Let's move it on now to Salty Sports Guy. I know him. Hey, uh, he's got a question. It goes something like this. Okay, here's a scenario for you. You go to sleep tonight and you are visited by the ghost of Marty Schottenheimer himself. He tells you that the fate of the Chargers for the next decade rests in your hands and gives you two options. Option one, Chargers hire Dan Quinn and have an undefeated Super Bowl championship season in 2024 with Herbert as Super Bowl MVP. But then Herbert gets traded to the Raiders, where he has a moderately successful career while the Chargers return to mediocrity with a coaching quarterback carousel. Or option two, Chargers hire Jim Harbaugh, who coaches Herbert and the Chargers for the next 15 years. They have playoff success and multiple AFC championship appearances, but will not win a Super Bowl in his or Herbert's tenure. What option are you choosing? (laughs) What have you done? What are we doing here? (laughs) What have you done to us, Salty? What have you done? Uh, Look what they did to my boy. <laughs> they massacred my boy. <laughs> they massacred my boy. <laughs> uh, I guess option one, because I want to win a, f- a Super Bowl. But at what cost? <laughs> <laughs> what cost? <laughs> no, I, I would, it wouldn't be fun to watch Charger football knowing that we would never win a Super Bowl. Yeah. What's yeah. the point? Bridesmaids, never the bride. No, uh, no. I want to be the bride. I want to be. I want to be the bride. Put a ring on it. <laughs> call it good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Take me down to the altar. Have my dad kiss. You know, Go give me away. To give the me a chapel kiss. And we're <laughs> gonna get married. <laughs> yeah, that. My name's Dan Quinn. <laughs> yeah, take it. Yeah, you can have my my daughter's hand in marriage, Dan Quinn. Let's yeah. go. And yeah. it's an undefeated season. Yeah, and that be, would be. Oh first, my God, we would be talking about the 2024 season for at least. 20 we could years. rest on that for 20 years. I, we could yeah. rest on that till we die, pretty much. The undefeated <laughs> season, because that's better than what the Dolphins did, because there's more games now. <laughs> till we die. Yeah, much. I honestly one an undefeated season. <laughs> I would get that tattooed everywhere, and I would just always remind myself of that amazing season. <laughs> You're old and wrinkly, going. Yeah, at least we had 2024, right, honey? Yeah, and then the, you know how they do the Super Bowl like videos for whoever wins the Super Bowl, the Blu-ray? Get oh, the yeah. Blu-ray, just pop it in and start, it just repeat. skip football. Just like whenever there's a football game on, just put that on. You don't yeah. have to watch it. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> that's All me. Right. But that's just me. I want a Super Bowl. No, I'm with you. Option one, you got to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I think... If that's the for sure way to win a Super Bowl and... Option two is 15 years of almost getting there, but never quite. I think, but I think there's an option C where we can, you know, have the cake, have our cake and eat it too. You know what I mean? I have a feeling option C is we hire Jim Harbaugh. We have an undefeated season and we go to the Super Bowl and Jim, Her- Jim Harbaugh. And he does and it 15 Herbert years in a row. For 15 years. <laughs> yeah. he'd, be, he'd be 75, which would be awesome. Yeah. I'd be all for that. All for it. But uh, thanks for the tough question there, salty sports guy. You nailed it. Uh, but, great hat, by the way. Yeah, great hat. What a dresser. That's a good uh, um, all right, folks. We go out of Ask Bolt Fam with Leo Boltz. Oh, shit. Who asked the question. Oh, shit. <clears throat> <clears throat> Graphic. 
Okay, Zaddy Bulldog. Veta, Kyle, and Poppy, Kevin. Oh, <laughs> I've been holding my sweet warm tongue all year regarding the ways the season turned out. If I'm going to be honest with you all in my own humble opinion without being sentimental, and of course without upsetting anyone who thinks differently from my own point of view, <laughs> but also by looking into this matter in a unique standpoint, I would say that... I have nothing to say. Scheiße, scheiße, verdammt. Oh, nein, nein, nein. My apologies. I get very naughty when I get upset when my chargers don't do well in a season. Oh, well. Anyways, I'm looking forward to the off season with you all, Zaddies, especially the episode when we hire a new coach and GM. Oh, yeah. And oh, yes, yes, the draft. Mm, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. I can feel myself on the verge of climax and excitement for the deep inside. Oh, my tra-la-la, mm, my ding-ding-dong. Pick five. Here we come, Daddy. I'm ready to dive deeper into the off-season with you all, but speaking of deeper, if you ever want a deeper look inside the Charger Chat Daddies, you can head over to Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Charger Chat. Check out all the funny videos they have and much, much more during the off-season. But if you're not diving deeper, that's okay. You can head over to chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff they have there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. Oh, yes, yes. You can chat it up with other sexy Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions and ask about fam. So check out chargerchat.com. You won't regret it. Both say f*** up, daddies. Ken loves you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Leo Bolts. Oh my God. I love that. Oh, f that might have to be a commercial. We'll just take that out. Just isolate that and we'll make that the commercial. Like, why that's, did that? Are that's how we get people over to Patreon. That's our hype video. <laughs> our weird, sexy German Patreon. Oh. <laughs> Check out all the funny videos. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh shit. All right. Well, yeah. Listen, we all get a little <laughs> naughty and upset when our chargers don't do well oh, in this yeah. season. But uh yeah. all it means is now there's such a huge, bright future in front of this team that it's unfortunate it took what it took to get here, but we can only go up from here. We can't go any further down. Like that's just not going to happen. Not with the, not with the, what is not with, not for everything teasing us like Mr. Jimbo. Oh, hello, Jimbo. <laughs> no. And if he gets hired, Jimbo is going to stick whether you like it or not. Yeah. We're calling him Jimbo. We've got Jimbo. We've got Dick Perfect. Yeah. You got to handle that. You got to deal with that. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. <laughs> All right. Well, Leo Boltz, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking questions and Ask Bolt Fam. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, I Again, I hope I didn't come on too strong at the beginning there, but... I get a whole bunch of, like, two-word questions. <laughs> no, I don't want two-word questions. I just, I don't want to be the one to edit these. I want, I need some self-editing from you guys, please, and thank you. <laughs> Yeah, um, if you have any questions for Adam and uh, why he doesn't like to edit things, you can ask those in there as well. <laughs> Chargerchat.com. Yeah, slash Patreon. Let's go. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Any final thoughts there, Kev? No, I'm re I'm ready to hear that we have a new coach here pretty soon. Like, yes. I'm beyond excited and ready for it. We're going to hop on, do in more instant reactions when fun stuff happens. So hang in there. We'll get, we're going to do this together. It's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah. And a, and a reminder, we don't, we're don't. we not going to be doing any Friday episodes during the offseason, but if news drops that involves a certain Jimba, you better believe we're going to drop what we're doing and immediately oh, yeah. get on here to talk to you guys about our thoughts and feelings and emotions. And that, and that goes <laughs> for, like, my kids needing to be picked up at school. They might have to wait. Yeah, they... They're in a safe space. They can yeah. wait. <laughs> Go inside. Go inside. Lock the door. Daddy will be there in a couple hours. <laughs> but uh, all right. Well, hopefully Kyle doesn't come back too sunburnt. 
Is but I think that's so tan. What a piece is. of shit. I hate him. I love but, you. <laughs> I hate you. But I love you. I hate you. That's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Kill love you. Bye. Kill loves you. Bye. <laughs> oh, Zaddy. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Barbecue Boys. Bubba 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 Barbecue Boys. Yeah. Barbecue Boys. Yeah, we know what's up. We got barbecue sauce that we put in a cup. No, we don't got ranch, bitch. Don't even ask. Yeah, we take you out back and we kick your ass. We got all kinds of flavors, smoky and sweet. There's some tangy and some garlic and it's all for your meat. Don't waste time asking what's inside. Man, that's just proprietary. It's freshly certified. So come on down and have yourself a meal with the barbecue boys and we'll cut you a deal. We don't like ranch. Well, one of us doesn't. And that's enough.